Hey everybody, what's up? Grimdark here. Today we're going to cover uh, how to equip your PMC for a raid. Uh, we're going to go over everything that you should bring and why, and uh, what I have equipped here, as well as some other alternatives, uh, depending on what you want to do. So, first of all, let's go over the weapon and the magazines and ammunition. So, any weapon that you want to bring is basically going to look something like this. Uh, at least for how I play. This is all going to be based on how I play, of course, but just for... Uh, for your learning purposes this is just how i do things and uh i have one magazine in the gun three in my rig and then one in my gamma and i have one in my gamma because the one in the gamma is uh full of good ammo and these ones are full of uh, sub well secondary ammo secondary tier ammo and uh, usually i keep this one completely full of 995 and then this would be my uh pvp magazine so if i happen to get in a firefight that's drawn out then uh, I would make sure to swap this magazine with maybe one of these and have it ready for a reload or manually reload it uh, during a fight real quick by right clicking it and install right. And what that allows me to do is conserve a lot of the expensive ammunition in case I get one tapped off spawn or something unfortunate happens while still having that PVP, you know, deadliness with high tier rounds. And then I have good enough rounds here in case I don't have time to manually reload, then I will just use these and it'll do just fine. But, you know, uh, when you can, you want to be using the best ammo and that's what this is for. Um, this is not that many magazines for something like the HK that shoots so fast and anything above 150, 850 RPM is going to just destroy your magazines and your, your ammo. You're going to be out almost every time, single time you fire the gun, you're going to need to pack a mag. So I know this and that's okay. I just plan to get in and get out. If I had to use all these and then I was on this magazine, I have this other stack here to refill these magazines. We'll talk about that in a second. But I would start to leave as soon as I got to this magazine. That's, I mean, by that time, hopefully you've killed enough people that you're looted anyways, or you can use their guns. But I also like to carry a stack of ammunition with me, and usually more than one, usually two to three. But uh, this, this kit for me is really meant to be like a solo loot run, survival priority, more than PvP, but capable for PvP kind of get up um, and for that reason I'm not bringing more than one stack uh, but what this is for is uh, the same the reason that I have two 30s here and not more 60s that, that I could bring 60s right well it's because you can't repack a 60 round magazine as easily as you can uh, these 30 rounders and especially the battle mags because they have a negative 10% load and unload speed modifier which means that when you unload the bullets when you load new bullets into the magazine it's going to go 10% faster than otherwise whereas this one has a plus 60% uh, modifier to load and unload making it honestly near impossible uh, I go into a raid prepared to drop these on the ground. I don't pack 60 rounders. The uh, the silver ones, like this one, are actually a little bit better for the 5.56 class at 20%. And these are, eh, they're doable, but oh my god, it's, it's agonizing. So what I do instead is I bring the 60s and I prepare to drop them on empty and get them back insurance. And then I have these two 30 rounders and that's what the 60 stack of ammunition is for. To pack these real quick uh, on the go and basically prepare to head to extraction. Um, and one last thing too, when you load, oh, I didn't do it on that one, but some of these may, well, you'll see it here, uh, split your ammunition stacks. If you're trying to conserve good ammunition, so that it's just an armor breaker at the tip of the magazine. And what I mean by that is you always want to have your secondary ammunition, your second best ammo at the bottom, which means that you load it first. So that's at the bottom of the magazine. And then you take the good ammunition, you put it on top. I notice a lot of new players, they'll put it uh, reverse. And all that's doing is hurting yourself and saving some good ammunition for the guy that's looting you. So make sure that you're hitting them with the deadly rounds before the bad ones uh, for obvious reasons. Uh, and that's that on magazines. So, beyond magazines, what do we got? We got armor here. So, uh, got a tactical rig, armor tactical rig. There's a lot, a lot of information about armors and differences between them, but uh, the main reason I'm, I'm running a tactical rig right now is because I was planning on going to reserve. And for the Red Rebel Extract, you need to have an armored rig or no body armor to uh, be able to use it. 
And because it's a lot of hassle shoving your armor into your backpack at the end when you're trying to extract, I like this for ease of use. Um, for body armor, as well as body armor, if you're playing to PvP with a heavy PvP focus for the raid, then you need to be bringing second best or best ammunition and level 5 or up body armor if you want it to protect you. Now you can get away with being naked, you can get away with being level 4 armor, uh, you can get away with almost anything in this game, but the, the thing is, if you if you want to tank a bullet from a good, you know, a well-kitted guy with good bullets, if you want to have a chance to live more than one or two shots, it needs to be level 5 and up to be consistent. Um, that's how I see it is level 5 and up is for PvP and level 4 and down is for PvE. And of course they, they function against players as well, but uh, if you're going to equip yourself for a specific mission, you want to keep those guidelines in mind or you're only setting yourself up to be starting from a disadvantage and who wants that. Uh, beyond that, uh, I know I said this was a, like a loot run kit. And it may be like, why are you wearing Alton if you're just looting and not PvP focused? Well, the Alton is for exactly what I said before. It's level 5, so it's for PvP. And when I'm running around on the map, I didn't plan on being sneaky. I planned on basically shift W around the map. I don't want a scav or a player with bad ammo to get a lucky headshot on me as I'm rotating and just drop me, which happens occasionally. So uh, Altons are good for that. Altons really the only helmet that's actually going to help you in PvP, and even then, not even that much by the time everyone in the raid has a, a lot of hard-hitting rounds like M61. Uh, I like the Ghost Mask. I know this is an armor, but we'll just go over all the wearables. Uh, the Ghost Mask is cool because it looks cool, obviously. I mean, look at that thing. That's sick. But it's not great for stealth, but stealth doesn't matter in, in the Alton, and it also looks kind of stupid in Alton. But the reason for face masks, as everyone knows, is to protect your horribly glowy pale face from shining through the night, and uh, it definitely helps with that. Condor glasses are cool. Uh, their effectiveness remains to be seen, but based on what I know about the game and how layering armor works, I think they're very worth it. Uh, all right, and that looks like all I, uh, as far as backpacks are concerned, you wanna bring the biggest backpack that you can't afford to bring and that you're willing to run because obviously it's gonna make you less stealthy. So keep that in mind if you're playing on sniping, then you don't need a blackjack or even a backpack at that point questionably but in that situation i bring like a burr cut uh but uh this is a backpack that i run sometimes if i'm planning to pvp or go to factory or something and i just want the possibility to pick something up if i need to but i plan to take other people's backpacks and uh this is what i like to bring for my loot runs because uh if i'm already bringing in you know a million dollars of kit then i need to be bringing in a backpack with enough space to grab enough loot to pay for that kit and to justify the risk of bringing it and running around with it in raid in the first place because you always want to try to get enough loot to break even on the cost of your kit and ammunition expended during the raid and uh, if you can't manage to break even on one raid then you're not profiting until you do and you're gonna have to survive two raids to break even when you could have been profiting on the second one and obviously the more raids you do the more risk that you're going to risk yourself to open yourself to and uh with a blackjack 50 and a, a backpack like this looting only high value loot or anything over twelve thousand uh value per slot you'll easily come away with uh your kit worth and then some if you get a good rate uh so that's about it uh most people if they're not gonna run the big big ones i attack two is fine and i would say the minimum to bring into a raid is a tricep uh, if you're serious about paying for some serious gear and making some money. Uh, that's about it for that backpack. So on to the food and the medical stuff. So on a lot of the maps these days, you can end up getting stuck for a pretty long time. And with the metabolism the way it is now, your character runs out of food and energy really, really quickly, especially with the way painkillers are working now with the drain that they have that they didn't used to have. So for, for me, in my opinion, uh, food and water of some form, and you don't even need this chunk, you can bring just a pineapple juice, but I like to be super prepared. Uh, and obviously I got these in raids, so they're free, but at least one set 
enough to bring you from like half to higher higher levels of hydration and stuff uh, is recommended because as you'll see in some videos that I'm going to be posting, there's many, many times where like even at the very, very start of a raid, you could be put in a situation where now you're just stuck. You know, it's you, know, it's you against a squad and they're waiting and you're waiting and you can't leave because you know you die. Well, they can try to outlast you and if you don't have food, they are going to win. But if you do, then it makes things a lot harder for them, obviously, right? So even though, you know, you may be able to find it on the map, you know where the spawns, you, or you're already full and you don't plan to stay in raid for that long. If you can afford to bring it, then it's better to have it when you need it than to need it and not have it, as they say. Uh, and I'm sure you guys understand what I mean by now. So beyond that, the serve kit. Same reasons as the food, but even more vital. The only way to repair blacked out limbs. And let me tell you, if you have a blacked out arm or a leg and you plan on trying to continue the raid, you're probably going to die. And then getting to extraction, even if you don't, is miles harder. So you always want some way to repair black limbs like one of these or a CMS. Now, CMSs are great because of the reduced size. Uh, I've had a few people ask me what's the difference. Well, CMS is slightly faster, but it's only fast enough or slightly faster to the point where I don't see it as anything considerable. So uh, I don't really worry about the speed of the two. But what the Serve 12 kit does compared to the CMS is it heals for considerably more. So uh, you can see here that it heals for three times the amount of the CMS for your limbs, right? So that means how much it's going to repair your limb to. It doesn't go back full HP. It goes back. Uh, it goes back to this amount, basically. That's how much it restores off your black limb. Uh, so it's a big difference. I don't need to tell you that. Obviously, you know, when when your head has 34 hit points and your limbs have 35, and you're restoring 15 or five, which one would you prefer? But you can get away with the CMS. I run CMSs if I'm running more budget, and I'll run a serve 12 if I'm running high tier gear and I'm expecting to run into people, as I would have expected if I just ran through a map looting and not caring about stealth as I as I had planned to do. But uh, definitely give it a try. I, I don't put it in my gamma because I have enough money to buy these consistently, but putting your gamma is a good, good call. It's just that with all this crap that I literally need to bring and the mags being worth more than a, than a serve 12, I'm not too worried about letting my enemy get a hold of it when I die because it doesn't really matter, you know. Uh, but it's, it's definitely something to think about if you play with squad or whatever. You don't want to give resources to the enemy if you happen to die that they could use to create an advantage or anything. Um, but yeah, so think about that. If you have any more questions on that, let me know. It's more of a personal preference. All right, and the last thing is the medical items. So if I'm running a budget kind of loadout or, well, I guess not budget, but PvP centric loadout where I expect to have combat and I'm not gonna sneak around and avoid it. I like to bring a grizzly because a grizzly allows you to bring less expensive medical items with you while being able to do it all and do it all for the longest. So I don't need a Salua, I don't need an IFAC. <coughs> Voice crack I don't need a Salua, I don't need an IFAC because this does that both of those functions itself. Now, this one has a longer animation than the other two's. The other two healing items but um that's what i have the ai2 for it's also quieter than the grizzly so i use the ai2 to top off if i happen to take like chip damage and i'll use the grizzly if i have a serious problem now one thing i like to do is i also like to bring an additional aluminum splint with me even though the grizzly can heal fractures because the ai or the aluminum splint applies the fastest out of all the splints and sometimes you want that quick in combat splint behind cover before they push and the grizzly's not really going to be great for that at all uh, but if i happen to have any uh any splints that are like low on count i just bought a bunch so there's not but say this one's like two out of five that's definitely the one you want to bring along with you so if you lose it because you die it's it doesn't even matter uh beyond that you, you always need something to heal a fracture. So any sort of splint is a, is a requirement, a must. You always need a way to painkill yourself. 
which I have right here. Usually I have a painkiller like ibuprofen or Golden Star in my Gamma, but you know, bringing ammo this time, and, and that's the kind of downside of running HK. You need a lot of ammo uh, to where this is like not even enough, I don't think, but it's about sufficient, but just, you know, on, on the edge of it. But anyways, uh, Vaseline's cool. If you're bringing PKs, painkillers, and you expect to be pre-medding and stuff, you need to have water, and that's that's like a must in that situation. So if you plan to pre-med a lot, you plan to run around a lot, you just have like ibuprofen, you need to have like Aquamari or some sort of water in you, because every time you use it, it's going to be 15 hydration and stuff. This one's only five, but a lot of other ones, like this one, has 15, which is considerable. Um, and then we have Propotol. Propotol is a painkiller that heals you in combat. I use this a lot. If you happen to have a blacked out limb and a fucked up body, you can serve your blacked limbs after you hit a Propotol. And by the time you're done and you go on to serve the next limb, uh, your Propotol will already be healing your body and your, your newly repaired limb. And by the time you're done, usually I end up uh, with all my uh, limbs healed fully and only one needing a top off and that saves you a ton of time and saves you making a ton of noise when you're possibly you know uh, being hunted by who knows by lord knows what right? and also last thing uh four to six grenades six for pvp four for utility that's what i found is a magic number for me i felt like with three i ran out too quickly either trying to use it to kill the enemy worked for utility i'd had to choose one and with four or more i feel like i have lethality plus utility because there's a lot of things you can use grenades for that go beyond the scope of attempting to kill your enemy and that's honestly what i use grenades for more often than uh using them as some sort of solid offensive idea and yeah that's it make sure you have your keys make sure you have something you keep dog tags in if you can believe in yourself dog tags are good money and they retain value regardless if you die or not so it's always good to try to bring them out of raid as well as the tactical advantages that come with denying your enemy the information that dog tags provide which i'll cover in another video sometime and yep that's about it if you guys have any more questions let me know the differences in loadout don't really change much i'll be honest with you if i were to use another gun it might be different amount of magazines up to four or five that's about it another map i might have more ammo in here might have my surgery kit in here uh but i'm i'm gonna keep the same amount of nades and i'm gonna run this backpack or something like a beta at the least and yeah that's about it thanks for watching guys uh gonna be pushing out a lot more videos per pertaining to my experiences in tarkov and the things i know about it uh, techniques, tactics-wise, etc., etc., and slowly over time, the quality of videos will will rise. But I just wanted to start pumping out videos now as a resource for people, and then I figure later on in time I'll go back and I'll look over everything again and redo some. So, like, subscribe, and comment below anything you want me to cover, man. I'll be pumping out these videos pretty quick until we get a lot of the basics covered. Thanks for watching, guys. See you soon.